Oh, and we're being live streamed on Facebook here too. So I'm going to invite live. you guys both in here, bring John and Cassie in here on uh, Instagram. And we are live. Look at that. <laughs> wow. So many places to look. So many places, so many faces. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. So uh, we're here. So many places, so many spaces. So many pups. Just, just one pup. <laughs> and oh, we're oh, and a monkey. Nice. Two monkeys. Monkey Two monkeys. Also three humans. Do the semblance. Um. So uh, I'm really excited for a special guest today, Miss Cass, Mrs. Cassie Fireman. Um really amazing artist who's a great inspiration, uh, muse, teacher, um, friend, bandmate, and romantic partner. This is my wife, Cassie. I'm very <laughs> excited to have her on the show. I'm Hello. super excited. Me too. Uh, yeah. We, we hear about Cassie a lot on the show in good ways on how Ben balances his energy and how he learns how to communicate with the feminine and, uh, to, to have you on the show is just like a special treat. So I'm really, really excited to dive in and, and see what's going on in your world, Cassie. Well, thank yeah. you so much um, for having me here as your guest. I just have to say, it's been so lovely watching all of the people. Can I just do the point of focus? There's three. Yeah, trains. just here, oh, here. Okay, I'm gonna One of those two. do that. Um, I just wanna say, I just, just watching everybody come together and grow has been such medicine, and especially for men like as a woman just waking up and hearing y'all in my living room every monday i'm like oh what a gift what a gift to everyone to the world so thank you um happy father's day to everybody you know um it was super bittersweet for both of us as some of you know like ben has lost his father very recently and um and i lost my father when i was 17 and i can go into that a little bit but what i was thinking about like in coming on and being with you guys this morning is like, what do I want, really want to say? And I think first I just want to say like, isn't it interesting how, you know, like in my marriage, we're just in so, di so very different places, like super like grief, loss, very recent pain, right? And then here's like the other side, like celebrating like this album I've been working my butt off on and on Father's Day. So we're just coming from these like kind of different spectrums. And really, I think what is so beautiful is that we've been able to agree to hold space even in different spaces like mm. how can we just support each other in what we're both up to and what's really happening in present time right now and and the truth is there can be space for all of it so it was like him celebrating my joy at the launch and then checking in and it being father's day like it's all so beautifully serendipitously divine right and um you know, uh, I just think that like what you guys talk about, you know, the, the healing paternal wounds, just a perfect little segue into this. So happy to share. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Cassie, for that. Uh, I just wanted to say before we go in any further, um, get this out of the way, because it, it, it's important to me to put it in the way, actually, is um, that you know, when I met Cassie, uh, I was going through a really dark time and healing in my life. And I decided I was going to stop bartending, become a yoga teacher, try to start taking care of myself. And really, I was trying to be single. And that's working on myself at that time, my relationship with myself, I believe, is why I attracted her into my life and vice versa. And um, she also so brought music out of me. I hadn't played music in years. I was going through yoga teacher training. She was going through Thai massage um, certification. And so we started this healing company together. So before we were even married, we had a wellness company called Soul Fit NYC. And we bring wellness to schools, to senior centers, to businesses, to people's homes, um, and all over the world. And so we've taught together and ways of learning through love and through we share um, some pretty intense history uh, where we both had like some fame and money and early in our life and like kind of lost it all. And Meaning then, like when it's a serious, serious debt. 
Yeah, um, and yeah, we're it's earning six figures in our early 20s. And um, and so through our pain and, and through our healing, we've really grown and then created this awesome thing. We also have a band together uh, called Dirty May. And um, all of this is saying one of the reasons why I want to have Cassie on the show is she's always been a teacher and a muse to me. And even though during this time of, um, you know, Father's Day and celebrating fathers and as I'm grieving my own father, she's uh, just released a single yesterday on Father's Day called Thin Air. And it is about, I'll have her tell you more about it, but it's, 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 she's been healing her father when through that song. And, um, and there's a really some wild stories inside of that, but she'll tell you about it. It just released yesterday. Um, and I'm really excited about that too. And it's all over Spotify and Apple music. And, you know, I think I just uploaded it to YouTube. So please take a listen. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing that, babe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I my father died when I was seventeen. I think he um he OD'd. He had he had a drug addiction. And I met him once and um was with my mom when she was pregnant and we were out on the streets and there was just like so many reasons to be so upset, you know? Um, and I harbored that for a really long time. And I went to therapy and I thought, you know, I I dealt with it and, you know, twenty something years later I'm writing the song. And I'm thinking it's about something totally different, but when I start singing the chorus, which is thin air, thin air, are you there? You're not there. And I was singing that just like on the guitar and something hit me in the gut and I was like, oh, this song's not about that. This song's about this, you know, my dad. And it's been kind of a, sort of a trippy experience in the sense that, you know, when a, pater- when a parent isn't there physically, you know, for me, I made up stories. My imagination filled in the blank. Um, and, you know, as I stepped into creating this music, which for me is my medium for healing, it's my medicine, it's, sorry, I haven't been on the phone, I'm scooting into the frame, um, music is the medium for me to take that pain, those gut-wrenching things, and it becomes a bridge into something different, and this song really came from a place of pain, but it it bridged and bloomed through my curiosity. And that's just what's so beautiful is like this willingness to bring the curiosity. And in the exploration, I felt closer to my dad than ever. I mean, this might sound weird, but there were times where I just felt like literally could feel his energy just sort of like bouncing around me as I made this music. And um, when I met him once, I went out to the woods where he lived, and I went in. He was an artist, so I got to see his art studio. He made sculptures, and he painted, and he could make weapons. He was just super, super talented, you know? So I think I get some of that creativity and that, like, fire from my father, who I haven't known. So inside of, like, being creative and and doing these things, I'm like, I feel like I'm tapping into his energy. Maybe Mm -hmm. he's on a different plane. He's no longer with us. Whatever it is. This song for me at the end of the day is just a reminder to myself and to everyone that we are the storytellers mm-hmm. of our lives. We create the movies, right? So we can take something dark and we can spin it into gold if we want. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's like that. But look, like, I love this song. I really hope you listen to it because I feel like it's just like a really simple example of like literally you know, like taking something that hurts and you like make it into a sick beat that you want to shake your booty to. Like, that's a beautiful thing, right? And that's mm-hmm. a lot of what you guys are up to, what your community's up to. And that's part of why it just feels so good to tap in with you all because um, I feel like we can really uh, understand this, you know, together. Um, I'll just pause there, see if there's any questions or if this is landing or... I just want to ask the the uh the crowd at home the, the people watching if this resonates with you maybe drop an emoji or if if you have something you want to share just type in the comments below we'd love to hear anything that resonates with you um that really uh resonated with me your story and just um turning turning that that narrative around because you are the storyteller and um oftentimes people do just <clears throat> tend to vent or just complain about things in the past that they had no control over. And it's so healing when we can step into our power and 
take that pen and that pain and, and flip it into uh, the true narrative, the hero's journey, right? So thank you. Um, so how was your Father's Day? Did you, I know you launched the song or dropped <laughs> in musical terms. Yeah, I dropped like, yeah. Both, yeah. Drop and, the and a music video, which I wow. want to talk about, but um, yeah, tell them about Father's Day. Well, yeah, so, I mean, you know, like I said, it was a little bit bittersweet, but what was so beautiful is um, we got to spend it with our bandmate, Robbie Frost, and his wife, and he's like, those are our homies, and he lost his father, too, a couple years ago, unexpectedly, and now the three of us, um, we just, we just feel each other, you know what I mean, like, we feel it, and um, it's okay, it's okay to feel it you know interesting and i'm like just saying like i'm okay i'm having an emotional response i'm really connected to robbie and his dad with his muse incredible musician also named robin frost and like right after robbie's dad died like he started seeing these robins around everywhere and robbie you know had a hard time but we were able to put he was able to put a lot of that in music and we were able to be together and, and we that's, were really there for him when it happened and yeah. now it's been two years and and he's showing up now, you know, like for Ben, and it's just we're all just kind of taking care of of each other, you know. Um, yeah, and it's um, you know what's beautiful too is all three of us have lost our fathers here and been through quite a bit, and had success early on, recreated ourselves, burned our lives down at one point, and risen from the ashes, and um, you know I think a lot of that and we talk about healing this paternal wounds here too, and some people don't even know what that is. So if you're listening and you don't know, that's okay. Um, usually, I'll just real quick, we have, um, you know, masculine and feminine energies inside all of us. And it's the paternal wound isn't always necessarily from our father, but it, there is that grandfather energy, that grandmother energy and everything in our ancestors that's passed down to us. So if there are energetic wounds in our, let's say our fathers or, or their fathers, um, like my father uh, was not um, at peace with his sexuality until really late in life. So there was like an internal struggle for a lot of himself that he made wrong, shame, guilt. And that was sort of something I inherited. I learned subconsciously, um, but something I had to learn to heal in myself. And, you know, anything that was incomplete with how my dad couldn't show up and or how our moms couldn't show up. And our parents are human, so they inevitably will fail us. Trauma will happen, and that's how we learn. So from that, we grow. So the paternal wound is it, and or, you know, the, the masculine energy is an opportunity to just look at what did we receive from our fathers uh, that was healing and good, and what have we taken on that may be theirs, and it may not even belong to us, um, you know, where, what is that wound in us that um, maybe we shared with our fathers? And I'll just say briefly, Robbie shared with me that um, actually grieving from his, um, once he started to heal and have less grief in his life, that that actually, he felt more disconnected from his father, that the grief and the pain is what connected him. And um, I said that really resonated with me too, is that I learned that um, we really, uh, grief can connect us. Our pain can connect us to our purpose. And that's something that I was really moved by inside of Cassie's song is how you were able to connect your pain into your purpose and turn that um, into something light. Thank you, honey. Yeah. You know, it's so perfect being here right now in this moment. Um, you know how sometimes you're like inside of a project or something you're doing and it's not until you're finished and you zoom out and you go, okay, that's what that was for me. Sitting here, when I think about, you know, I, you guys were talking about healing paternal wounds and I was thinking about, well, what, what are the, what's the impact from not having a parent? Like what, what, like what does that look like, you know? And, you know, neglect, absence, like abuse, control, withholding, like there's all sorts of things. Um, that impact us later down the line. And like, for me, it showed up like unworthy, stupid, unlovable, unloved. And I became a doer. I would do, 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 do. 
um, to get that like validation and acceptance and people to like me rather than just like learning how to like really be. And that's a lot about what like these past several years, particularly this past year in the pandemic has been like for me, it's been like just kind of showing up anyway through all of those feelings and now releasing the song, releasing this new song, like a dope song that's like high quality, like a fun music video, like it's really, it's really triggered a lot of those things, right? Like, who are you to be releasing this right now? Are you good enough? Like, the frauds, and, like, all of those things are just there. And I'm just at this point where I just want to say, like, if anyone, artistic, creatives, entrepreneurs, truth seekers, whatever you're up to and you're doing and you're having those doubts or second guessing, like, just go for it. It's so freaking normal. It's not even weird at all. Like, we, we've got that. It's okay. And, and just keep going. And um, that's what I did. And I got an album now. And I'm very excited about it. So, um, and just thank you for all your support, too. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. The Woods was a fun scene when we were shooting the music video in the woods. Yeah, I wanted to pull up a clip for us. Um, but there is, so we flew to California on December 6th to shoot for Cassie to record this. And our flight back to New York got canceled. I ended up staying with a uh, grandmother for a few months, who also recently passed at 101 years old. And um, that was amazing. And uh, inside of that, she was also start shooting her music video because we realized, well, we're already out here in California. We might as well stay and get the video done. It was in Topanga. We crawled up these mountains and into caves. It was a fun shoot. We had a lot of different locations. But the final scene, do you want to hear about that? Yeah, so I was I was dressed as this. Um, you'll see this music video. It's called Thin Air. Just look up Thin Air, Cassie Fireman, on YouTube. It's also on her Instagram. And I'm dressed as this creature. So there's a black and white scene with the night sky behind us. From a costume store. $19. And, Amazing. Uh, like a creepy. Yeah, so I'm sort of this hands. creature that, that uh, stands for her darkness and that she dances with. And we had this amazing um, scene to that. And then we had spent uh, a week choreographing a tango between this creature and this woman. Um, it didn't quite look like a tango because as we were trying to tango, we realized, wow, this is a very respectful form of art that we have no idea how to do. So we sort of... It was a tango-inspired tango. choreography. <laughs> okay. Yes. Anywho. And so here we are, the final... Scene. She's shot the whole we're music the video, which already had to be pushed back a week because of my surfboard injury and surgery so that she was very patient and her whole crew pushed back the entire uh, thing a week at which point when I was in the hospital I found out that my dad had just been hospitalized and it was continuing to fall and while he was recovering from COVID it had set him back mentally and there's something wrong and we couldn't figure it out cut to a week later the last night the last day of the shoot we're about to shoot the final scene which is uh the creature and the woman dancing together in the woods like making peace with your demons yeah and we're walking up to shoot it and i get a phone call and my phone hasn't worked i haven't had service the whole time but i knew my dad was in the hospital and i called my it was my sister and she said uh your father's dad's going to emergency surgery they they're not even sure if he's going to live and make it to the operating room um, so I just so he's dead. left. So there I am alone in the woods. No, no tango buddy. We don't know what's going on. And, um, the director, he actually wore Ben's clothes. They dressed up to be like the extras in the back. We, we just basically had to improvise. But the, the point is the kind of like, just to sum up all of that, this final scene in the music video with the tango, it was, it was meaning to express like that piece when you learn to dance with your demons, except the demon, AKA Ben in the costume had to split emergency with dad. There I am in the middle of the woods with the crew, no plan on what to do. So I just start, you know, crawling through the grass. I'm covered in bugs and dirt and slowly like turning into some kind of plant. But, um, you know, I, I say all of that because it was just so serendipitous that it was that moment that I had to be alone with my own story and that he had to go be and do his thing. And, um, you know, the next morning we flew out on the first plane and went to the ER and went to the hospital. And shortly after, you know, Benny's dad passed. 
but he lived through the surgery to he made it say back goodbye yeah. to both of us actually. Yeah. And you completed the video and so was, the coyote visited us along the way. So what Ben, were you, so there's no Ben as the creature? Correct. He is though in a second. He put oh, it, the costume. Okay. And tell me if you guys can see this when you watch it. Okay. okay. But he's, we, at the end of the night, we crawled up this dark hill and I sat on his lap and I was kind of moving my arms and he had the creepy arms so you can see like the octopus, you can see little- She's sitting in a chair that comes alive, basically. I'm just giving away everything. So it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast, maybe? (laughs) It's like a moment, yeah, it's like a moment. It's like, well, this is what it turned into. Um, But the cinematographer was so phenomenal and the directors that- um, Tasha Teplo and his partner Sage and Aaron Alps, like everyone on the team were just like total professionals. They showed up. There was no green screen this video. You'll see this night sky, it looks unbelievable. Everyone was into it. And that's what was so cool is that during such a dark period, like we were all, all of us little group of artists were brave enough to emerge and come together and create things, you know? And, it was so refreshing. It really saved my ass and, and had me keep going, you mm. know. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And oh, so I was saying that the, the, like, um, uh, you're asking like Beauty and the Beast, like you can't even really make out what the creature is in a way, the way it's shot. It's really creative. So I think you should just go watch it. I think um, I'm going to watch ben, it after this, this show. Ben Air, Cassie <laughs> Fireman. Oh, it's, Air. And it's just on her Instagram. That's the easiest way to find it. Um, so definitely follow her. And, um, you know, Cassie's also a yoga teacher, a coach, a healer. Um, and so I'm really excited to have all of us together. And Yeah, I work with, like, other um, artists, particularly women. Um, and that ranges from, like, body work and sound healing to, you know, just coaching around. Like, what is that thing? What's that creative thing that's going to, like, bring you more energy and give you more flow that you're, like, just feeling kind of scared? And it's does it could be cleaning out your fridge or it could be making your next soul, soul album like it could be there's a range right like it's it's whatever feels true for us um, so i do that and i brought my gong with me you know we've moved 22 times in the past yeah. year of the covid searching for any place to live each time letting go of more and more and more things um for the first time in probably 20 years we haven't been on a lease and we're actually just you know popping around and that feels like sort of sad and lonely, but also very freeing, and um, so, what was the thing? I don't know, I'm just thinking Sorry. about, I'm daydreaming about coming to Houston. Oh, and... my gong, my gong was one of the things that made it, so, like, uh, that didn't get thrown out. The didgeridoo, the gong, like, three pair of socks, three pair of underwear, oh, there's something better underwear. Yes. Because, <clears throat> you know, you can just make your little travel bag, and you can just go. No. So I'm visualizing uh, ways to travel. Let me know. Yeah. I'm visualizing you guys being in Houston. We'll have like a healing day or weekend of maybe ma- making music to heal your paternal or maternal wounds. Yes. Gong bath. Yes. Divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Yes. Yeah. Oh we have something God. called the Love Workshop, which is uh, like a. a like a three hour workshop of like dance, movement, meditation, play and deep diving into human connection yeah. with yourself and other awesome. people uh, that we really want to start taking on the road too. Everyone was like, when's the next one? And then like we got distracted for five years, but we might be circling back. To yeah, that. into Texas. I want to um, see the Garage Mahal. And I yes, the Garage to, Mahal. <laughs> I know, I can't wait to come visit you too. And um, and I'll bring my tie mat and, and bowls. I have a feeling there's bowls and tie mats already there. At there's lots. Of, there's lots of bowls there. We have a lot of mats, but not tie mats. So, um, mm. is that like the thicker kind? The, That's the mm-hmm. thicker kind. Okay. We have a travel and a larger one. I can. Oh. I can. I think I can get some though. That oh, way you don't cool. have to pack yeah. pack it. <laughs> Unless you want to just pack it, and we'll make a, a fun day. Um, okay. I've always wanted to learn how to do uh, the tie massage. Right. Mm. I can't wait to see. Okay, and I'm working on a really fun, a really uh, awesome little workshop um, and sessions that are around paternal healing. So we work on the different chakras and the mantras and the body parts, and uh, it's pretty yummy. So, yeah, that's that. And, John, tell us about uh, 
the so you I kind of brought up yoga and garage mahal leading into the you know the the international say of yoga and what you've been creating there yeah. and the kind of healing you're doing because we're talking about all these different modalities for healing and you know yoga really has a lot of those things in the spaces you're holding for people to heal and I would love to hear like what happened on Father's Day with yoga you know with like yeah. did did all these did men show up how was a lot, it? a lot of men showed up so uh, last night was father or yesterday was Father's Day and uh, my crew my team and I we co-hosted uh, International Day of Yoga with the Indian Consulate General so um the last four years we've been working with them and so we're going to do the another one tonight um at india house so if you're in houston come to india house at six we're going to have uh pranayama breath work yoga meditation sound healing and uh, just different communities are all coming together so it's not like one studio is hosting something we're just picking a central location so that the whole collective can uh, can join, and and the garage mahal is actually closed tonight, so that all of our people can go to International Day of Yoga. So awesome! We're, wow. we're excited. That's mm. amazing. That sounds so yummy. So if you're at home watching and you're a yogi, happy International Day of Yoga! Um, it's celebrated in over 177 countries around the world. Wow. So we're excited to be uh, connected to the, the Indian consulate and be the host for Houston. Wow. No yeah. wonder I was wanting to do yoga this morning. Yeah. Just just felt it, it in your body, huh? <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So um, how did men show up inside of that space? Did you see mm. a lot of fathers? There's actually a lot of uh, fathers that brought their kids. And uh, tonight in particular, we're, we're having a segment of it is where dads that are yoga teachers are teaching with their kids on the stage. So we're going to have a little segment of that. So uh, we don't have a lot of men yoga teachers in our community and especially men that are dads, but the few I'll that come. we do have, yeah, we're, they're, they're bringing their kids and they're going to um, do demos on the stage with their kids. So it's a really cool, um, good way for to connect and, and bond yeah yeah and, and yoga yoga means yoga means union so um and that's happening today is that today, today. are you gonna bring y yoda is he gonna be your child um yoda be your kid yoda might just keep the house uh safe <laughs> while <we're... laughs> yeah he's he's not the most athletic at the moment uh, <laughs> but he hasn't moved i don't think he has <laughs> He has great breath work. He he can. He's uh, really he, into that. Yeah, <laughs> he's really working his yin energy today. His ujjayi breath is great. He's a, uh, he's a great snoring ujjayi breath. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's he's in meditation mode right now. So <laughs> we'll talk to him later. <laughs> well, that's so exciting. I, I I'm totally there with you in spirit. I think that's yeah. amazing that kids can do yoga with their dads on stage to be celebrated in the community and witness like. The, that's a special thing. Sorry. Yeah. Where are you guys today? I'm curious. We're in Long Beach, New York. We're a couple of blocks from the beach, which has been. We're here for a month. It's the longest we've stayed in the for a whole long time. Aside um, from when I live with my mom and sister for six weeks. Yeah. yeah. So we, I mean, you know, I feel so. I brought my time mat and bowls out in the backyard and to the beach a few times today. And um. Also, like part of the healing I've done too here is like gone and gotten in the ocean, like yelled and punched the water and cried and played and yeah, um, it's been really healing. To super have a healing body of water. Yeah, you can scream as loud as you want and under a wave, and no one will ever hear you. Yeah, <laughs> and it's except also, for Mother Earth. <laughs> yeah, except for all the dolphins. And the all dolphins the and Mother Earth and Gaia. <laughs> she'll yeah, exactly. she'll, she'll nurture you. Yeah. The process. yeah. And it's also great to play, you know, through we yeah. talk about trauma and the stuff gets really heavy. A lot of things we don't talk about is the importance just of continuing to play. And that's a really great way to heal our paternal wounds. Um, and that's something I actually realized my dad taught me is like serious and like hot tempered as he could be a playfulness and a lightness that you can bring to life and to your day, even when you're having a really really crappy day um 
that you can just go play more. And that really can shift things so much. Like getting in your body literally changes the, the neurons immediately. And we have neuroplasticity. So for like, no matter what we're going through, we can get in our bodies and find some sort of play or dancing or exploration or whatever, um, that that can be really great. Yoga is an awesome way to find forms of play and getting in your body, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so is, you know, running, walking, all t great types of meditation, getting in the ocean, getting out in the nature, um, sorry. playing with uh, friends. Um, you know, even though I was really sad yesterday, it was important for us to find a moment to, to play together and create that. So that's something that um, I really use as therapy. I encourage all of my clients to do. I've got like a um, really cool video on YouTube, uh, I just called the power of play. And it's about that. Um, and, uh, John, I'd love to hear, um, sort of how you've like, how you're working with these, how you're healing these energies in you. Um, you know, we've talked about some of your relationship with your father. Um, you okay over there? <laughs> all the screens. I'm, um, I'm just not in yeah. here. You are, you you're right here. Right yeah. Like, can I just be normal? Like, what that is? Yeah. Okay. So I was actually okay. going to ask. Why am I not in there? You know what I'm saying? You are. You're right here. Oh. It's just, it's the way oh. it's set up. I was going to ask the audience. Live, my friend. Yeah. This, this is Cassie's first live, by the way. So we're celebrating. Gotcha. Well, welcome to IG Live. <laughs> so I was going to ask the audience, um, what's something, one thing that you learned from your father, whether you were mm -hmm. close to your father or maybe you never really got to meet your father but in the process there's something that you learned or something that you could be grateful for so if you're at home and you're watching you can just type in something you you learned from your father uh or that you're grateful for mm. um even just being born is, is something right yeah that's something so i that's all you have you know like if you don't yeah. Fast forward um, Jesus, a great work ethic. Awesome. From their father. Yeah. So anyone else out there that wants to type in something they learned from their father or or gained from maybe not, you know, even though they're not there to teach us, sometimes we can still learn from from like that that energy. Um my dad always taught us to uh always um we always had to eat dinner together. Mm. And uh, it was it was so weird because our schedule, there's four kids and there, we always had crazy schedules with like football and band and things like that. But he's like, I don't care what time you get home from school. We, we have to figure out, we all have to sit together and eat. And, and it's something that I do now with my, my circle of friends and community. We, we always eat dinner together. Like after yoga, mm -hmm. we'll go to eat or we'll do potluck. Um, and the other thing was that when we did sit and eat together, he would make us not speak English. So we had to speak Vietnamese, which I hated it at the time. It was like, dad, why do we have to speak Vietnamese at the dinner table? Like, it's so not cool. <laughs> like, and now- I, Four of I, the six of us speak English very well. Yeah, we speak English, like, you know, like we love English. And, but now that I think about it, uh, I'm really grateful that I got to, to learn how to speak Vietnamese. Otherwise, uh, you know, it was those years where you pick it up or you don't and if you you know i think like when you're preteen or i don't know what year it is but the brain like absorbs things and it stays in your brain i think it's like that five to eight maybe That's you know why your dad was so adamant on like he, it, he, it seems like he was so aware like, he, was doing, <laughs> he was so know? strict man he was just super strict <laughs> about it like we're gonna eat dinner at the same time and you have to speak vietnamese when we're at dinner and it was just like almost militant and now I look back and it's like all right that was cool thanks thanks for that lesson so um, and that worked six of you were able to find time to sit, sit down together with all those schedules yeah yeah that's so we, really powerful we sometimes had to eat a little late but we all got to sit and eat together and mm. talk about how school went and you know stuff like that so that's really but powerful one thing I want to share though is that I had a friend talk about um, her dad leaving 
you know, the family when, when she was really young. And she mentioned how it really taught her how to step into her masculine and uh, in a positive way to really take care of her younger siblings. Um, and it just made her just a strong woman um, to, to learn from her mother, feeling the, the kindness, the softness, the, the intuitiveness of learning from her mother, the, the feminine side, and then really just learning how to pick up um, the masculine energy and to really protect the siblings, looking out for them. And now she's just, uh, just a powerful goddess, you know, great woman. So, um, so whether you're at home and, you know, the father energy was not, the paternal father energy was not there. I think it teaches us to really, whether you're male or female, to step into a role um, because that, that paternal and the maternal energy is within all of us. And we, it allows us to activate that energy, tap into to our own inner wisdom, inner teacher. So. Amen. Yes, it does. Thank you so much for sharing that, John. Yeah, thank you. That's so funny you say that because um, my, uh, my mom remarried when I think it was like three or something, and my dad was, my stepdad was in the Navy. So I grew up with him, but he would leave uh, every six months for six months. So it was me and my mom, and we would take, and I, it really had me take care of my little sister, you know? But me and my mom would create all these rules, you know? We'd be like a team, and then my dad would come home, you know, six months later and try to be like, these are the rules, and me and my mom were like, no, 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 no. Like, we've been ruling this house, you know? So that those transitions were always um, interesting, but uh, I am so grateful for my, my stepfather, and um, you know, he used to always used to come to my swim meet, and he just always showed up, and and that meant a lot, you know, he's sort of a, like a, would always push me to be competitive and be the best and um, a little rough around the edges, but knowing deep down that he's got, he loves me, you know? And um, yeah, so um, that's it. That's all, that's all I have to say about that. So I want to share yeah. what uh, El Eduardo Ruiz 11 has to say, he says, after learning what not to do from him, I'm grateful for a recent open-hearted conversation about our childhoods and his relationship with his dad made room for understanding and healing. And that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Eduardo. Yeah. Thanks, Eduardo. I hear, um, I hear a lot of men talk about that, like what not to do, and women too, you know, like what not to do from their dads or even what not to do from their moms. Um, so I think, you know, I, I was listening to a meditation this morning from a healer is talking about this. Um, and it's a great reminder in manifestation work. If the things we focus on not doing, uh, or what we don't want actually creates more energy to bring us more of that exact same thing. So, um, one of the things my clients I find, find most frustrating, uh, that I always focus on is, um, uh, oh, they can't uh, hear you, Ben. Okay. How about now? <laughs> <It's like> always, <laughs> always focus on hello. <laughs> is um, is uh, so? What did you learn from your father that is working? And so that's why I love that you said this. Like, what did we learn from our parents that we can take on and be proud of? And even if it's what not to do, that's important. But rather than focusing on not being our parents the whole time, guess, you know, that'll track you right towards being your parent. Um, what is the energy of the thing that you did learn? Like this healer was saying, like, he's a, he's a healer and his father's a, like, successful. People still can't hear me. That's so annoying. No. Um, yeah. That's really weird. Am I on? Oh, I know what's happening. What's I'm happening? Muted. Ah, Benjamin. There you go. Uh, so, <laughs> give us a thumbs up if you can hear Ben. Yeah. Or or the nearest emoji. Sometimes it's hard right, to find right. a thumbs up. Still can't. So, so we're talking about Still that was before. Okay. So we're talking about um, like when you in manifestation work that you actually if you want something, 
if you if you focus on what you don't want, you'll get more of it. So um, rather than focusing on not being our parents, how can we draw on the energy that did work and then take on from there? And so the sealer was saying, you know, my dad was is like a successful like sports coach, and here I am like a healer, and he may not have understood that, but what he did see is that he would like to have the same impact that his father has on the world of like how much he cares about the players and um, really showing up for those people and, and making sure they know what it feels like, like to work together as a team and, and actually have a positive impact on the world as a healer. So we can see what are the parts of ourselves, and you could share this, that uh, one of that your father had that you would like to shine more of in yourself. Mm. And I would love to hear, John, like what part of your father, Mm. um, and and definitely type it in if you guys are. are, So what part of my father? Would you like to emulate more of? Mm. Mm. What's a part of your father that you've taken on that's maybe a part of you now that you're proud of, Mm. that you love, that you'd like to have more of? Mm. He was really good at uh, just making conversation with total strangers. We'd be sitting at a restaurant and there's like a whole family over here. And he's like, hey, uh, where are you guys from? And he's just like super social. And I, I feel like I picked up a lot of that from him. Uh, just like strike a conversation with, with the family next to us. And just uh, and they're always really interesting people, too. It was like, oh, you just moved here from... Georgia, that's great, blah, 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 you know, so uh, it was really cool to get that uh, from my dad, and he just worked a lot, um, and I know workaholic, workaholicism is like frowned upon, but just that work ethic to provide for the family is something that I would definitely, um, I I know it's powerful to, to really uh, put the lives of others before yours, like, gonna go feed my family, you know, uh, work hard. And um, he was just uh, always looked out for like the best uh, for us, like teaching us like to speak Vietnamese or just like have good grades. There's always like, um, pushing people to, to be their best, to be in their highest. So those are the things that I really learned and, and uh, value from, from my dad. Thank you for sharing that. How about um, you, Ben? Well, I, I will share that momentarily. I do want to share, because um, mm. Mama Chula responded here and said, resilience and making the impossible possible. Mm. Mm. That's something yeah. that Mama Chula got from their father. Amazing. Um, so again, please, please share that. Uh, anything, if you're watching, what you got from your father that you'd like to emulate more of in your life. Um, John, I loved that reflection of work ethic and opening your heart. That definitely, I used to make fun of my dad. He would come to New York and start talking to everybody. And, you know, New Yorkers, because how many people there are, often don't talk to each other. Um I mean, they will if you strike up a conversation, but he would just go up to strangers a lot and it's like embarrasses Kathy a lot when I do that sometimes, even now too. I call him Mr. Rogers. In my, yeah, <laughs> my band. My band. <laughs> um, I learned how to like engage with people just to wave and say hi and um, that that would brighten people's days. So well, hi. I just want to say hi to everybody on, over here too. We're dropping in after Father's Day. If there's anything you want to say about something you looked up to, you look up to in your father, something that you admire, just feel free to drop in the comments. I guess. Yeah, Sharon Stone, yeah. Saba, and Victoria, chime in if you'd like. Yeah. Share something that you learned from the paternal lineage that has impacted your life. What about you, Cassie? Well, I was just thinking about our dynamic, you know, and how we kind of switch between those sometimes, that masculine and feminine and take turns. But with my father, you know, I didn't, again, I, I don't know. I've met my primal, or my primal, <laughs> um, paternal. Paternal. No, that's my biological. They're, they're the words, you know. My, I met him once, 
and you know he wanted to a test to prove that I wasn't his daughter. So I, I don't have a lot, you know, from him in terms of knowing his being or energy. But like I said, after he passed, I, I've seen his art. Um, I've heard stories and that's where I feel like he connects with him most is when I'm making art. And, um, and my stepdad, I love very, very much. And, um, I think that if I were to take something like from him, um, gosh, he's just so stoic. You know, my dad is a very intelligent man, and I think he's very emotional, and he hides it. Like, he would never come on one of these things, you know? He'd be like, what is this? Um, but I think that he is incredibly smart and just like so well resourced. Like I just love that I can go to him and he has like an answer for everything. You know, I really admire that about him. So what part of that, Cassie, would you like to emulate more of in yourself? For my my dad? Mm -hmm. Um You know, I really admire his, like, passion about what he believes is right and wrong. Like, it really, like, I see, like, myself as someone who kind of swims in the gray area and can sort of see everyone's, like, opinion. But I think my my, my, my stepdad, my Bill, he's, um, he just, he was in the Navy for, for 25 years, you know, and um, that was his, that was his community, and he has like really strong beliefs and I admire him for that. He's like kind of unwavering and outspoken about them. and mm -hmm. grounded and, you know, um, and I just admire him. Like that really takes something. So uh, I hope I can continue to emulate some of that mm. as they continue on. Um, but we love each other very much and I'm grateful. So anyone else, anything else that you love about your father? Um, or that you didn't love about your father that sort of became like a strong suit for you that actually kind of turned into a gift mm. that actually helps you move forward in your life, you know? <laughs> um, I actually have to think on it, to be honest. So, like, if you're not commenting, I totally get it. I'm sitting here racking my brain, but thank you for the inquiry. Yeah. For sure. mm. Well, I was just uh, remembering my dad could be really stubborn, and I've actually learned to – I went from doing a lot of people-pleasing to trying to – I've actually learned to take on that, what I called stubborn energy, just um, in what you shared, Cassie, I saw sort of like an unapologetic stance for how he believed, and he was very strong that's in that, and so that's actually teaching me that when I'm setting boundaries for myself, that I can kind of use that like stubborn hard head to actually, like I can use that to my advantage to help me keep a healthy boundary, um, because otherwise I you know, I won't sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's like a cool energy to take on. That's a masculine energy that can be helpful to us. Yeah. Um, I want to say again, as we're, we're going to wrap up here really soon. Um, if you're just joining us, please go to Kathy's um, profile, follow her and check out the first video, the, the video on there her music video for her new single, Thin Air which is, um, well, they can see you on here oh. right now so that you can just click on her and follow her. Um, her new single, Thin Air, the music video, which is uh, really helps and talks about dancing with your demons and turning your pain into your flame. And it just released yesterday on Father's Day. So um, just listening to these singles, uh, downloading it, liking it, just like here. You know, if you comment, you share this, you subscribe on YouTube. Um, you share it with a friend, it really helps boost those little algorithms because artists and people who are really sharing positive messages can often get buried because the news that is shared most is the hype news or the fake news or the yeah. intensified news. So um, this is just a reminder that you can make a big difference just by clicking mm -hmm. and supporting that way and I getting really, this message yes. of healing out into the thank, world. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for having me. And I just also want to add in 
thank you so much for watching for for all of those things and just a reminder like i'm creating a space i'm creating a space of community dm me like if you just want to rock out to the song and you love it let me know like it might have been heavy for me but that's what's so cool about art is it always morphs into something else and now it's just for you for your experience and um i just i really want to create a space of connection and um love and, and communication so so that's also there behind my music and come over hang out say hi i'd love to meet you get to know you and and i got like four more songs already ready to go i'm i'm coming up on some ideas for, for music videos and uh, i just love to hear your thoughts and thank you really for for having for having me i love all the work you guys are doing i honor you i see you i have so much love for you seriously and um and i can't wait to see this next mm, thank you thank cassie you. thank you cassie thank you for inspiring us just by by you uh, talking about how you healed the paternal wound through making music it just uh it's really inspiring me to like just go into my garage and bang on the drums and just you know see what comes up, see what comes up. It's just that movement of energy and uh in an artistic space yeah. can do so much healing so, so thank you mm -hmm. for for the inspiration today thank yeah so much. that's awesome oh thanks everybody love awesome. this yeah thank, thank you all for that's being awesome. part of this and being thank here you. with us Please let us know what resonated. Again, comment, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. If there's anyone you'd like to have on the show or any subject you'd like to talk about, um, please send us a message and let us know. We want to hear from you. Um, so again, please share, subscribe, comment. And um, Cassie, would you like to take us out with, uh, sometimes we like to let the guests close with a little meditation or uh, mantra or Ooh. any way you want what, 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 what are we doing here we have two minutes okay yep all right so let's just close your eyes and have some singing bowls yeah how do you just sing maybe maybe you just have singing bowls yes okay great. Right. okay we're just gonna do simple little let's just close our eyes and take a deep breath in <laughs> I just want you to imagine the vibe washing over you, washing out all the muck, and as you continue to breathe, imagine scooping up fresh earth energy up into your feet as it morphs into a ball of white light moving all the way up your body your chakras into your heart and just take a moment here feel your own heart your own source of life existing now in this moment together collectively we are one we see each other and we can hold each other and we care for each other as we And let's just really vibe off all those tiny things we can be grateful for until it turns into this giant wave that just keeps carrying us through. Thank you all so much. Let's just take one more inhale together. And exhale. Day, everyone, thanks for spending time with us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Namaste. 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 Okay. Happy uh, International Day of Yoga and Namaste. And happy <laughs> yes. Yes. Go do some yoga. Go do some yoga. And watch the video first and then do the yoga. And yes. Ben Air. Ben Air. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.